Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video and today guys we're covering the Xbox Series X which is a little bit of a controversial console that was announced a few days ago. So I appreciate you so much for clicking on today's video. If you could just click on the like or dislike button depending on how you feel about the video at the end. Subscribe if you like it guys, it is free, it's a few clicks and it could change my life, it could help me achieve my dreams and how great would it be if you were a part of that. But let's get that out of the way, I don't like doing that too much but it needs to be done guys, it needs to be done. So, Xbox released a Series X which is going to be the brand new next gen console that's coming out in the holidays of 2020. They released a trailer, let's watch that together and then we'll talk about it and go through the specs a little bit. Okay, I can't go full screen mode, but it's okay. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you so want. This is to Alan do. Watts, a dream of life. Big speech. And that you could have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Okay, so it's going you over, making, as you making the graphics look in that beautiful 4K, baby, you know what I'm wishes. saying? But now let's, I mean, um, it's easily so doable. Let's have a surprise. Off. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. And then you would get Man, more it's, and it's more crazy. I remember the PS1. And you it's actually like legit Minecraft. I mean, to what that you people would dream. Well, I'm guessing I might be pissed with that. And finally, you would dream hey, where well. you are now. Woo! And above the water, iconic as well. I mean, as we can see, it's a cube. But as we can also see, it's making ripples, baby. It's making waves. It's changing the game. It is, it's going to be awesome. So it's just going over the design a little bit. You can see here is a new controller design as well. So very similar to what we've seen. It's got a new D-pad, which is um, in relation to the Xbox Elite controllers, if you've seen them. And it's got a game share button here as well. Other than that, standard, guys, as normal. You've got two thumb sticks, you've got X, Y, B, and A triggers and bumpers, all the same. I don't know if it's going to implement any other features like the Elite. I don't believe it will because that's a premium product. You've got to pay extra to get it. Obviously, it's saying here, power your dreams holidays 2020 so that's going to be next year guys obviously and i can't wait to get this baby on pre-order this will be in my house as soon as it can be so if you missed the game awards or you've missed any other videos i want to go through the specs a little bit so i do play a lot of games but i'm not that type of person that knows nothing about the actual hardware that's been involved i'm a massive tech enthusiast i love talking about it i love researching into it and it's all awesome. So, Xbox have made some massive claims, and I am 100% behind this console. So, anything I say is not criticizing, but it is bringing some of these things to light, okay? So, we're reading from Wired from Xbox. You can go and check out this if you want. I can put a link in the description. It's talking about the specs, what the console is going to be kind of capable of doing. So, let's look into this and let's see what they're claiming because. It's saying here, from a technical standpoint, this will manifest as world-class visuals in 4K at 60 FPS. So, getting a bit technical, the Xbox One X, which is a console I've got, which is Xbox's first, like, 4K console. It did play some games, I believe, like, Forza at true 4K. But other than that, it was checkerboard rendering, where the middle of your screen is going to be a kind of a 4K quality. But towards the edges, it's actually going to go to a low quality. It's not going to work on it as much because it's not really what you're looking at. But guys, the Xbox X has 6 teraflops of power in GPU performance. So you don't need to understand that too much besides just know the Xbox Series X has 12 teraflops. So guys, what is a console? Realistically, it's actually just a PC. It's using PC components with a console kind of software overlay and operating system, right? So internals are going to be very close in relation to count to PC counterparts, but we're going to have limitations like laptops do. So in layman's terms, 
if we were to look at a PC of similar specs, we should get similar kind of performance. And what the Xbox uses is AMD. I would say the less powerful PC hardware, right? Intel is normally what you go for for gaming PCs, but AMD are changing the game. So what they're gonna be using is they're using the Zen 2 and the Navi architecture, which is absolutely awesome to see. But I did a little bit of research before this video so you guys don't have to. 12 teraflops of power is in between the new AMD 5700 XT and Radeon 7. Looking at specs, the Xbox One X should definitely be able to play X 4K 60 FPS. I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. So 12 teraflops puts you in about the 1080 Ti performance range, just lower than a Radeon 7 for AMD. And then Zen 2 is, AMD have been killing it on the processor side. It's got eight cores, which means that it's gonna have a lot of power to make sure that it can handle being in a party, playing the game, doing game shares, streaming from the Xbox. Streaming from the Xbox will be a thing, guys. You don't have to go out and buy a PC. You don't have to at the moment, but they'll be stepping that game up as well. That's gonna be great. So I would say 4K 60 FPS is a great start. They're claiming that the that it's 8K capable, right? But again, the 5700 XT is 8K capable, but it can't play 8K games. What I'm thinking that Xbox is getting at when you see all this 8K claims is to do with either media consumption, so 8K movies, or potentially if you've got the bandwidth to do 8K streaming over the cloud. Because you've seen things like Google Stadia, it's definitely something that's absolutely, it's taken over at the moment. Because you can play high-end games from a remote server, it's, it's crazy to think about. But the best thing that they're implementing for me as a PC gamer as well is variable refresh rate. They're only going up to 120, I, that's doable, it's fine. I mean 144 is nice, 240 is even better, but we know it's not capable of doing that, right? So I appreciate the doing variable refresh rate. It's gonna make FPS feel a lot better for games like Fortnite, for games like Apex, for games like Call of Duty, all of that is gonna feel a lot smoother. The 8K capability, like I said, it's, it's a pipe dream, but there's ways they can definitely implement it to make sure they're not falsely selling it. So they say here they're using the latest Zen 2 and next generation RDNA architecture from AMD. They're also gonna be having the ray tracing. So that's something that you might have seen on YouTube. You can go and look at all of this way more in depth with people like Linus Tech Tips. So that's where I get a lot of information from. But like I said, I do enjoy researching it myself. But ray tracing here, it's essentially, hmm, how's the best way to word it? Imagine being in a game and there's a mirror, right? And say an enemy runs behind you, you'll actually be able to see them run through the mirror. So it's like real time reflections, all that kind of stuff, lighting. It does take up more power, so it's a bit questionable. We don't need it. But for single player games, it'll look awesome. It won't always be implement, implemented and it can turn it off. So that's that's no problem there. I mean, that's what I'm hoping because I will happily play 4K 60 FPS for campaign, but I'm hoping that the Xbox Series X has more PC-like features if it's gonna go straight down that route. I want to be able to change graphical settings to hit 120 if I want to, FOV sliders, all that kind of stuff. Just a little bit more implementation, which makes me feel like I'm not as tied down as I am with a console, I, I, like I feel with the Xbox One X. That's why I like going on PC. I mean, my PC, I've got an RTX 2018 and i9 9900K. I can smash most games, but games like Counter-Strike, I still play on the lower settings because there is benefits to it. So they're gonna have, here's some stuff talking about the low latency. So ALLM, auto low latency mode, and dynamic latency input. This is stuff that's been around for the longest times. It will just mean that the console feels more realistic. If you've got a one millisecond response time t uh, monitor, that will also be a massive benefit. With things like DLI and AWM, it, it's just a benefit to make it feel even more responsive because weirdly enough, my controller does feel more responsive when playing Fortnite on PC with a controller than it does on the Xbox. And that's all just down to input lag. So it's great that they're doing things like that. And I think it mentions here a future in the cloud. That's what I talked about with streaming games from remote servers to get even more power out of your hardware. For someone like me, it's not viable at the moment. My internet is not fast enough. If I move out or if 
over the next year internet improves, which it should be doing then, that'd be fantastic. There's something I definitely need, otherwise I'm screwed. We've got four generations of gaming. Backwards compatibility is going back again. And then also the controller is going to work backwards compatible, but it doesn't really matter that that's going to be the case. Um, another thing that I missed out that they've mentioned down here is our next generation SSD. So what they use is an NVMe SSD. And guys, again, in layman's terms, this is just stupid fast. So a standard hard, uh, hard drive is a mechanical drive that has magnetic disks, they spin and a pin locates, finds the information, kind of like a vinyl record, I guess. An SSD is the next step. So that uses like flash memory to have even faster storage and it connects again to the SATA on a motherboard. And the reason why I mention that is because it kind of bottlenecks it. NVMe SSD goes straight into a motherboard, which means it uses PCIe lanes and it has the fastest read and write speeds that are possible at the moment. Depending on the quality of the the one they put in there, depends on the speeds, but guys, trust me. I mean, for PS4 players, and I know that they, like when you're doing a game, they're copying it over to a hard drive, that takes 40 minutes at times. That will be non-existent for both consoles now. And also, I think, even like, you can get bottlenecks, I guess, by your internet speed sometimes, because it will be able to download the games faster too, because it will be reading to the to the hard drive a lot faster. Obviously, you're still going to be like subjected to your internet speed, but it is, it's crazy. And then let's just talk about this design, because as you can see, it's a big box, right? From what I've read, it can go vertical or it can go horizontal. That's no problem. But realistically, why would you want to put a six? Because I think the price of this is going to be about five to six hundred pounds. Why would you put that into a small ass console because you're just gonna end up it's gonna ruin like your the longevity i mean it doesn't look great we get it but realistically we want something that is going to be sustainable for a long time something that we don't have to worry about it overheating burning out it's going to have to go into a larger chassis no matter what you've seen how big pc cases are and this is still tiny if the ps5 do it smaller with the same power and the same thermals, then hats off to them. But I can guarantee that there's compromises along the way. If they go to a smaller size, if they go, if they go to something smaller, they're gonna have to pull back on thermals, which means they're gonna have to pull back on performance. Otherwise, it's gonna perform overheating, and then I can guarantee that after three years, you're gonna be replacing the PS5 because all of the parts are gonna be burnt out. Obviously not literally, but it's just going to overheat all the time. You're going to have other fans on it. You're going to have to put a fan underneath it. And then that's going to add an extra few millimeters of height, all that kind of stuff. So trust me when I say it's not the right way to go. The size, it doesn't look great. Maybe they could have made it look a little bit fancier. But at the end of the day, it looks a bit like a speaker. I don't know who has two speakers on the setups. I don't, but I mean, it's, it's not going to be that bad. It can even sit behind a monitor, to be honest. I think it's going to be smaller than you reckon, but it's also going to make sense. Well guys, I think the Series X is very interesting. We're going to keep tracking it along the channel. I want to diversify my content because when I sub subject myself to one game, it really limits kind of my creative for my passion to even play the game at times because Modern Warfare hasn't been great at the moment. We all know that. But let me know what you think of the Series X in the comment. Let me know if you're PS5 or Xbox. And guys, I promise you, if I'm at 10k subs plus next year, I'll be giving one away for sure. So we'll see what happens there. But guys, if you liked, leave a like, comment, subscribe, like I mentioned earlier in the video. And I'll see you all in the next one.